Welcome again to the club executive training on district websites. Uh, as I was just saying, we'll be going over through the our, integ our rotary integ integration features of Club Runner and all of the different tools that you can use to uh, ensure that the information within Club Runner matches everything that Rotary has in their systems as well. Uh, so again, my name is Michael. I'll be taking you today through this webinar. Uh, I'm joined here today by Zach, who will be my co-host, and we'll be taking over the Q&A session that we will be having towards the end of the webinar. Um, if you guys have any questions uh, at any point during the webinar, please do feel free uh, to post them in the Q&A sec section of Zoom. Uh, and Zach will be working to answer them to the best of his abilities. Uh, and then he will also be taking a couple of those uh, towards the end to have a live demonstration of some of these questions um, towards the end of the webinar. Uh, any questions that we may that we may miss or anything like that that we may not be able to get to, uh, we will be taking them all and compiling a big list of Q and of, of questions and posting them to our various different support resources like the support the Club Runner Support Knowledge Base uh, and the Club Runner community. Uh, so don't worry if you don't have your question answered right away, uh, we will eventually be working to get answers out to everyone. And just as another note, uh, we will be recording this webinar, every, every recording for, of the changeover training, it will be recorded and posted to a later date. So if you're unable to attend for the full webinar, uh, it will be made available later on for you. So with all of that said, I do want to jump right into it. So. Oh, there we go. So here is a bunch of the items that we will be covering today. Um, so first off, we're going to start off with enabling RI integration and setting up a bunch of the different settings that are available for you to choose from. We'll be taking a look at the uh, membership updates archive, just so you can have an understanding of what information is, uh, is recorded and what information gets sent over to Rotary whenever changes are made um, within Club Runner. And then we'll also be covering a couple of different tools that we have available as well that help make it, that help make um, making sure that everything that you do update is correct and everything is up to date. Uh, mainly with the compare and synchronize tool as well as the executive compare and synchronize tool. Uh, these are some really powerful tools that I do uh, enjoy showing off to people as they make they they make everyone's lives a little bit easier, uh, especially when it comes to um, some of these issues that you might run into that can be kind of confusing. Uh, and then finally, we'll be going over some of the more common issues that you might be running into, uh, specifically in regards to RI integration. Uh, so for example, if you make an update within Clubrunner um, and it may, it may not get properly sent over to Rotary, or if an update was made into Rotary, but it's not available within Clubrunner. So this is a lot of the information that we will be covering today. Um, we will have a couple of extra notes and things like that uh, in between as we go along, but this is the general information that we will be covering. So let's go ahead and we can jump right in to our account that we are working on today. So here we are. We are, again, this is the a webinar for clubs using the district level website. Uh, if you are you work, if you do have your own club runner subscription uh, and you are working through your own club website, a lot of this information will still be valuable to you. Um, but the the way that you're going to go about accessing these different areas, uh, it's all it'll be a little bit different for you as well. Um, we do have another webinar coming up specifically for uh, for clubs that have their own subscription on this information. So I do recommend that you register for that as well. So. We are logged into our district's website here. We are on our, net, our, our administrative dashboard where we have access to all of the different sections that are available to us. So, but for what we were, we're covering today, specifically our integration, as I mentioned before, um, we want to go ahead and we want to first enable our integration. Before we do this, uh, any of the changes that we might make, uh, it'll only be live within Club Runner. So we wanna be able to go and enable our integration and what that will do is we'll make it so that any of the information or updates that we perform to our membership within Club Runner or the Club Runner tools, it'll also make sure that that information is sent over to Rotary uh, and, and performed in Rotary's databases as well, so that everything is synchronized and that everything is up to date uh, in both sections. So let's go ahead and we can enable our integration. First, 
we have to get to the R integration module. And now there's a couple of different ways that we can access this. Uh, one, we can go right down to the right, scroll down the page here, and we can see this RI integration session or section um, where we have access to a number of different options. One, we have the integration settings, which is where we're going to want to be going today. Or if we scroll back up to the top of the page, in this top blue navigation bar, we can go ahead and click on four clubs. And then from here, we can go ahead and click on RI integration. So we're going to click on this, and this will bring us to our RI integration settings page. So there are a couple of different things that you do want to note um, in regards to activating RI integration. You can see here that we have a number of different steps. Step one is to opt in at Rotary International's member portal. So this will involve you logging in to the My Rotary website. Uh, and going through the website to set Club Runner as, what, as what's called a club management vendor. We do have the steps written out on this page for you to follow, but if you would like a more visual guide as well, I would recommend going to our Club Runner support knowledge base, which we have over here. So you can access that at clubrunnersupport.com. And if you go into the search bar here, we can go ahead and type in RI integration. We'll hit enter. And from here, we can, we can scroll down just a little bit and we'll see the how do I set up automatic integration with Rotary International. If we go ahead and click on this, this will bring, us, bring you to a more, um, a more laid out instructions for how you can enable RI integration on Rotary's end, specifically with this link here. This is a guide direct, that has been provided by Rotary themselves. And if we click on this, It'll bring up a nice little PDF of document that we can view um, with images and highlights of exactly what you need to do to go through and enable um, to enable Club Runner as your management vendor. So once you've been able to go through all of these different instructions, setting Club Runner as your primary um, management vendor, we can then go back to our RI integration page. And from there, you'll see that you will now have access to this checkbox here under step two. This checkbox here will switch on data integration between Club Runner and RI. And any active members records within your club will then be able to start synchronizing their information um, between Club Runner and Rotary so that any updates, again, are, that are made in Club Runner will also be sent over to Rotary. So let's go ahead and check this checkbox to enable RI integration. And from here, now that we've enabled it, we can see we have a nice little confirmation message down here at the bottom. Integration confirmed on this date uh, by Vincent Valentine, who, which is the user that I'm currently logged in today as. To the right, you'll also see the RI integration status. Uh, this will let you know the type of RI integration that you have enabled. There are currently two different types of RI integration that you can have. One is read and update, which is the primary one that I recommend everyone uses. Uh, this will make it so that the cl your Club Runner uh, website or your or RI integration will be able to read the information that is currently available within Rotary's databases. Uh, and that will allow you to pull information from Rotary into your, into your club. Uh, and then you'll also have the update status with this uh, so that any information that's updated within Club Runner will also get sent over to Rotary. Uh, we all, there, there is the one other status that we have, which is read only. Uh, if you are in the read only status, that means you have enabled Club Runner as a, um, as a management vendor, but we are not the primary management vendor. So you want to double check to make sure that Club Runner is set as the primary vendor in order to enable read and update status. With read only status, Club Runner will only be able to see the information that's currently in Rotary systems, but we won't be able to push any updates over to Rotary as well. So that's why I do recommend that you ensure that you have read and update enabled to make sure that there's no issues between the two. And then just as an additional note, um, between Club Runner, or, or an additional note in regards to the, how RI integration works, is that it is a it is very much a one way street. 
So whenever an update is made to your club's membership within Club Runner, say you go through and you update the email address of one of your members, that information will automatically be sent over to Rotary and updated in that member's profile on Rotary's end as well. However, if you were to instead log into my Rotary and then you update that email address for that member directly through Rotary, that information will not be automatically brought over into Club Runner. Uh, so I usually recommend that, but that you make any changes directly within Club Runner. So that way, um, so that way, the changes that you make, you won't have to perform a second time. Uh, if you make it in Club Runner, it'll only be one and done. You'll update it in both places. If you make your changes with my Rotary, you will have to re-perform your changes within Club Runner as well. We do have a couple of tools that help um, alleviate this, as we'll get to in just a little bit. Uh, and I will show you how you can manage, the, manage these tools as well. So next. Uh, on this page, we also have the Club RI integration privacy settings. These privacy settings will allow you to go through and de determine exactly what information is sent over to Rotary. Uh, I typically don't recommend changing these uh, as member individual members that may want to restrict certain information from being shared with, um, with Rotary. Uh, they'll be able to go into their own personal privacy settings uh, and they can disable some of this. Um, to override these settings. Um, but if these are enabled or disabled by default, regardless of what their privacy settings are, um, this information won't be shared. So for example, if we don't wanna share our birthday, our home address, um, our, our cell phone numbers or things like that, we can deselect these options. And then we can go ahead and select the update privacy setting or update privacy button. Uh, and that will make it so that this information is not, um, is not shared with Rotary. But again, I usually don't recommend changing these too often and allowing it to be, of, uh, be up to the members themselves to make these changes. So let's go ahead and make sure that everything's okay here. We'll go ahead and click on update privacy just to make sure. And then we can scroll down one little, uh, a little bit once more and we come to the RI integration notification contact. Now, one of the tools that Club Runner does offer is called the updates archive. Uh, the updates archive will give you a history of all of the information that is currently listed, or sorry, an, uh, a history of all of the updates um, that have been performed in Club Runner and sent over to Rotary. Now, you may occasionally run into some issues where the updates that you perform, um, they might not be accepted on Rotary's end for whatever reason. Whenever this happens, the RI, the Rotary Integration Notification Contact that we select here will be sent an email uh, to outline this uh, or to outline this information uh, to let you know that, hey, there's been, there's been an, uh, an issue that, might have, that you might want to take a look at to make sure that everything is up to date. By selecting the contact here, uh, you will be able to select who these emails are sent to. So you can select between whether this is sent over to a, uh, a, an executive position of your club. So it can be sent to the president, the secretary, treasurer, uh, whichever position you would like. Or you can select it to go to an individual member of the club. Usually, I recommend leaving it as select automatically. And what this will do is that it will automatically, or it'll automatically set the contact to the current year club secretary. If for whatever reason your club doesn't have a current year club secretary, um, it will go to the previous year secretary. And then, if, and then in, if there is no secretary from the previous year, it'll then go to the president of the current year and then the president of the previous year. If none of those are available for whatever reason for your club, It'll just go to your basic Club Runner website contact that you can enter within your club details. So once you've selected your contact, just go ahead and make sure you click on the save button in the bottom right corner. And this will make it so that uh, your change has been saved um, and you're free to leave the page now. So now that we've enabled RI integration, I do wanna show you uh, um, a few things. 
Um, we're mainly when the, the process of adding a member and terminating a member as well as editing a member's information. Uh, now, if you guys did attend the beginner webinar that occurred yesterday, um, this information has already been covered, so we'll be running through it very, very quickly. Uh, there's only uh, a couple of different sections that I do want to show off in, in these particular pages. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a member first. So we're in the top blue navigation bar, we're going to go to four clubs and then membership lists. This will bring us to the active membership list page for our club's website. And we can see here that we have the list of all of our members. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to add a new member by clicking on this button in the top right corner. And this will allow us to start entering the information for our new member. So let's see here. So this is the page where we can enter in the inform information for our member. Up at the top, we have we can select the membership type, the sponsor. We can enter in the rotary member member number if you have one as well. Uh, there are the date that they've joined the club. But the main thing that we're looking at right now is this integration options um, setting that's here. The two options that are available is report this new member to Rotary International and do not report this member to Rotary International. What this will allow you to do is it will allow you to determine whether the member that you're currently working on adding to your Clubrunner website uh, will have their information sent over to Rotary and added as a new member. So if we were to select report this new member to Rotary International, all of the information that we enter will be sent over to Rotary and this, and they will be added as a new member of the club on Rotary's end. The do not report this new member option uh, will do the opposite. So if you enter all of this information and you have this option selected, um, the record will only be created within Clubrunner and it won't be sent over to Rotary's information or Rotary International. So if you want to make sure that this person is added as a new member, make sure that this report, this new member option is selected for you. So now let's really quickly, we can go ahead and we can add in our new member. So let's go ahead and add in member case Sith here. We'll go ahead and add in their first and last name. We will select their gender. And then we can go down and we can enter in their address really quickly. This is just the address for the club runner offices. So we're just gonna enter in this so that we can continue through this section. And then as we scroll down, we can continue entering more information, including their username and a temporary password. And then once we're happy with all this information, Let's double check we have the report this option selected, we do. So what, as soon as we click this add new member button, uh, all of this information that we just entered will be sent over to Rotary and updated in Rotary's databases. So that the Kate Sith individual that we're adding right now uh, will be included as a new member of the club. So let's go ahead and click on add a member. You'll see that it's process, processing just a little bit. And now we see we are brought to Kate Sith's new club runner profile. And all of this information is now being processed and sent over to Rotary Systems as well. Uh, another thing that I want to show you is we can go ahead and we can edit their profile. And uh, now that they've been added as a new member. And we can change kind of whatever information we want to, to say about them. So let's say, for example, we want to add a new email address for this individual. So we can go ahead and we can add an email address for them. Let's go ahead and add the support club runner, uh, the club runner support address. And from here, um, we can go ahead and we can click on the save button. So now that we have RI integration enabled, this update to Kate, uh, to Kate Sith's email address is now going to be sent over to Rotary and added into their, uh, into their Rotary profile as well. Um, so this goes, this, uh, this goes for just about any of the different sections that are, that are listed here under the personal, uh, personal tab of the member profile. So if you make any changes to the first name, their last name, uh, their address, business address, any of that type of information, they will all be sent over to Rotary as well. 
And then finally, let's go ahead and we can go back to our membership list page. And we can now also terminate a member as well. So let's go ahead and select one of these members here. We can go for Donald Sutherland. If we go over and click change status, and then click terminate membership, you can see that we can now enter in some more information regarding the termination of this member. So we can enter in the date of their termination, which is defaulted to today's date, but you can select this calendar to change it to whatever date you would like. We can then select a termination reason. So let's just say for lack of participation for now. And then at the very bottom, you'll see that the exact same settings that we saw before when we added a new member. We can either choose to report the termination to Rotary or we can not report it to Rotary. And it works exactly the same way. If we don't report it, um, the member, the record will only be terminated in Clubrunner. If we report it to Rotary, they'll be terminated in both. Sorry about that. Um, so let's go ahead and we can select this report, this termination to Rotary International, and we'll go ahead and click on terminate member. And now this information is all being processed. Um, and once that's done, it'll bring you right back to the active members list page. And if we scroll down just a little bit, uh, you'll see that the member that we have just terminated uh, is no longer listed here. Uh, and this information and this termination has now been sent over to Rotary uh, just for your to be updated on their databases as well. Now, how do we know that this any of this information or this um, the synchronization was successful? How do we know that the member that we added was added into Club Runner correctly, or the member that we just terminated was correctly terminated? Uh, so with that, we have the what's called the member updates archive which as I alluded to before, is a full history of all of the changes um, that had been made uh, through RI integration. So it'll only include information that is affected through RI integration. Um, any changes that you might have um, that, aren't, that are just within Clubrunner only, it won't have any, any of that, but anything that's sent over to Rotary is logged within this, um, with this archive. So in order to access this, we can go ahead and go into the four clubs tab. And then we're gonna go on to go ahead and click on the RI updates archive or member updates archive. Um, this just as a note, this is a testing environment for Clubrunner that we are in right now. So some of these things are uh, titled a little bit differently or they may be in a slightly different location, um, but just make sure that you're going to member updates archive or RI update, updates archive, whatever you see on your end. If we click on that there, it will bring us to this page that we see, the RI Member Integration Archive, which is a really, a really, really useful tool uh, in order to make sure that you can keep an eye on any of the changes that are being made um, to your club's information. So if we scroll down just a little bit, you can see, we can see a record of all of the various different changes that we just made. So we can see here, Don, the, our termination of member Donald Sutherland, uh, we, we so we this sorry this change was made to Donald Sutherland uh, in the club our, in our Rotary Club of, of Tavistock. What the change type was a termination of the member, uh, so we're removing that member from our club. We can see the date that the change was performed and the status of um, of that change. So we can see here the termination of Donald Sutherland uh, was completed successfully. So they are no longer listed as an active member of the club. If we move over to the right, we can click on the details action in order to look at some more information regarding that specific change. So we can see the member name. So Donald Sutherland here, the, it was a member termination on May 7th, 2022 at 4, 24 p.m. Eastern time. The status here uh, is complete. So it was done successfully. And then here is just some more basic information regarding that member. Um, so we see their termination date, uh, the termination reason, and, uh, and for historical purposes, their rotary member number here. And if we scroll down just a little bit, uh, we, we can close that and we'll scroll down just a little bit. Here are some of the other changes that we made. So here is Kate Sith that we added as a new member, which was done successfully. So they are now listed as a member of our club. 
And then if we right above that one, we also see a history of our email change that we made for Kate Sith. In this particular case, it looks like when we had updated the email address for that member, the address that we had already added was already listed somewhere within Rotary systems. Now, Rotary requires that every single Rotarian has their own unique email address. Otherwise, you won't be able to add it into their profile. So in this case, we see that there was a duplicate email found in RI. So what that means is that the email address that we added to Kate's pr in, uh, profile is already in use by another Rotarian. I've also seen cases where it's, all, it's still listed in their own member profile, but as a secondary email address. So that is another thing that you might want to double check. But generally, um, this is because you've entered, you, might, you may have entered an email address of another member of your club, uh, or another very common one is that this individual is sharing an email address with their spouse. Um, I've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, couples do this, where they will share an email address and then they will both have it entered as their own uh, within Clubrunner and in Rotary, but that's not something that Rotary supports right now. Um, so you want to make sure that you have your own unique email address. And then if you move over to the right here, you'll see the notified tab, and we can see we have an option to mark it as resolved. Since we did get this error message that there is a duplicate email, this is an example of one of the issues that will be sent out to our RI notification contact to let them know that, that hey, there was an issue when you updated Kate Sith's email address. Uh, you should take a look at that. And once you've been able to review uh, and go through and fix anything up that you might have that might have happened, so you've entered in a new email address for them that is unique to that individual, you can come here, click on Mark as Resolved, and you can enter in additional comments um, for that individual just to let this for some additional information. So we can say here, um, Kate Sith is in their spouse's address created a unique address for them. And then once you've entered in your comments, go ahead and click Save. And now we can see this little, um, this little comments box will, or comment bubble will show up, indicating that it has been marked as resolved. And now that it's been marked as resolved, um, the, the emails regarding this issue will no longer be sent out to, uh, to your contact. So that is the member updates archive. Uh, another, another one of the tools that I really want to show off today is the compare and synchronize tools. Uh, this will allow you to take a look at some of the uh, information that is what, directly within your members' profiles and allow you to kind of shift information between Rotary uh, and between Club Runner. So in order to access the compare and synchronize tool, in the same four clubs tab up at the top of the page, we can go ahead and we can click on RI member synchronization. And this will load up the compare and synchronize page for our club. And we can see here, um, we, have a, we have a heading up at the top, members in sync. And then we have a list of all of our club members that are, that are here. Um, you'll see, uh, so within this page, there are a couple of different headings that might appear. The members in sync section indicate that the record that that individual has within Club Runner and their profile within Rotary, their, their information is connected. Um, so whenever an update is performed in their Club Runner profile, uh, that means that the information will be able to be sent over to Rotary and processed on their end as well. And there generally shouldn't really be any issues that you might run into. Sorry, bear with me for one second. Sorry about that. So uh, as I was saying, um, anyone that shows up in this members in sync section, um, they are synchronizing with Rotary and their profiles are connected in the two systems. Now, one of the things that you can do 
Um, and the, something that I think is really, really powerful about this system is the compare action here. So let's go ahead and we can show this off to you really quickly. Um, let's find a member here. So we have Karen Winger. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on the compare action for Karen here. And we'll take a look at their information. So we've clicked on to compare. Um, and right now the system will gather all of the information that it has within Club Runner. And then it'll also grab all of the information that Rotary currently has in their, uh, in their systems as well. And if we scroll down just a little bit to get a better, a little bit of a better look at what's going on, we can see that the, uh, on the left hand side, we have the field column, which lists um, the individual pieces of information um, that this member that has uh, the information tracked for this member, sorry. So we have all of these inf pieces of information listed here. And then next to it, we have the Club Runner section or the Club Runner column. Now under this column, it will list all of the information that is currently stored within Club Runner systems for that individual member. So within Club Runner, we can see that this individual's first name is listed as Karen, their last name is Winger. And then if we scroll down a little bit, we can see that their address is currently stored as 2010 Winston Park Drive. If we scroll back up to the top, um, we can then see on the far right side, we have the Rotary International section. Now, very similarly to the Club Runner section, this will list all of the information for this member that is currently listed within Rotary International systems themselves. So, um, they, Rotary also has this individual's person's name as Karen Winger. But if we take a look, you can see that they have a different address that's listed here. Uh, within Club Runner, we have 2010 Winston Park Drive. And then on um, Rotary's end, they have, uh, they have this one here. I'm not even, I'm not, I'm not even going to try it pronouncing that, unfortunately. Um, but so this will give you kind of an idea of what you can do with, um, with the Compare and Synchronize page. You can take a look at exactly what information might not be exactly matching up between the two systems. And what we can do with this tool is we can either choose to pull or we can push information between the two systems. So if you ever run into a situation like this uh, where the information isn't quite matching up uh, quite right, um, and you want to make sure that everything is, um, is matching, you can use the compare and synchronize page to fix that up. Now, while we were going over these a couple of different sections, you might have noticed this column that's running down the middle. Um, it has a header of these two arrows. And if we go down, you can see that there's a number of different equal signs. There are some arrows facing to the right, and then there's arrows, some arrows facing to the left. Uh, these, what these arrows mean, or what these arrows do, I should say, is that they control the way that information flows. So once we go down to the bottom of the page and we click synchronize selected fields, depending on the direction that these arrows are pointing, it will change the way, um, it will change the way that the information is flowing between the two sections or the two databases. So for example, um, we have these right-facing arrows pointing from the Club Runner side over to the side of Rotary International. So what this will do is when we click synchronize selected fields, the information that's currently listed in Club Runner will be sent over to Rotary and it'll be updated on Rotary's end. So if you can confirm that the information you have in Club Runner is correct, you can go to the compare and synchronize tool Make sure all of these arrows are pointing to the right. And then when you hit the synchronize selected fields option, it'll send the information from Club Runner and update that individual's profile on Rotary's end. However, you can also do it the opposite direction. So if in this uh, middle column with where we see our, 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 sorry, our arrows here, if we click on them, we can change the direction. So now if, so now we've clicked on it, We've gone from the right facing arrow to the left facing arrow. And now when we have the arrow facing to the left from Rotary to Club Runner, and we click on that synchronized selected fields button down at the bottom, 
The information that is currently listed in rotary systems will be pulled from rotary and it will be used to update the member's profile within Clubrunner. So this is a really, really uh, a useful tool that you can use to make sure that everything's up to date. So let's go ahead and we can try this out. Uh, so we know in this case, we know that the, that the address for, um, for Karen Winger here, we have the correct address in Clubrunner. So we're gonna go ahead and we are going to push the information from Clubrunner over to Rotary. So let's make sure that these arrows are pointing to the right. And from there, oh, we also have the phone type here that's also missing. So they don't have their, their home phone listed in Clubrunner, but they do have it on Rotary's end. So let's go ahead and we can pull that information from Rotary as well. So we have all of the arrows set up the way we want the information to flow. And from there, we can go ahead and click on synchronize selected fields. You'll get this nice little confirmation message just to make sure that you are sure that you wanna perform this action. Um, if you, when, when you're ready to go ahead, you can click on the okay option and you can see that this information um, is now being processed. So the way that we have it set up, the address that, uh, that we have in Clubrunner will be sent over to Rotary. And then the, in the phone number or the home phone number that we have in Rotary systems will be come over to Clubrunner. Now the page has refreshed. And if we scroll down just a little bit, you'll see a little notice down here at the bottom, scheduled for integration in the next 24 hours. Uh, usually these changes are fairly quick. Um, they'll happen within about five to 10 minutes and make sure and everything will be good to go. But you can see down here at the bottom, the phone, the home phone number, that happened almost instantly. So some of these changes may, might take a little bit of time. Um, some of them might take, uh, might be really quick. Um, generally, the information that is being pulled from Rotary will happen really, really quickly. Um, but the updates themselves might take a couple of minutes to process. So if we come back to this page or we go back to the member's profile in a little bit, uh, we'll see that this information has now been updated and is matching in both systems. So now we have another um, version of the compare and synchronize tool that I do wanna show off as well. And that is the club executive compare and synchronize page um, tool. It works very, very similarly to the one that we are looking at right now. Um, but this will be specifically for your club's executives. So let's go ahead and click on executive compare and synchronize under the very same four clubs tab. And this will bring us to the executive compare and synchronize page. And here, uh, we'll be able to see a list of all of the club's current executives. So we can see Vincent Valentine here is currently listed as the club president. Uh, and we have Marcy Gamber here listed as the club secretary. It looks like there is a little bit of a uh, difference between their last name, but it is the same record. And then, and then we also see we have Eddie Tuberfield here listed as the club foundation chair. Um, but we don't see that on Rotary's end as well. So what we can do, uh, if there's any discrepancies, just like with the irregular compare and synchronize tool, we can click on the arrow to change which direction the information will flow. We can select the position that we want to synchronize. And we can go ahead and click on the synchronize selected positions button, click OK. And now the position that we have selected, so the club foundation chair um, for Eddie Tuberfield, uh, will now be sent over to Rotary. And as you can see, the club executives sync succeeded. So this information has now been sent over to Rotary and that information is now being updated on a Rotary's end. Uh, again, it might take a couple of minutes for that information to start appearing within these tools, um, but just know that this information is being synchronized correctly, or it is being, it is being processed, I should say. Um, if you do run into any issues where these changes do or aren't, aren't successful, uh, they will all be, again, they will all be listed under the member updates archive that we just took a look at. So now if we go back there, um, you can see the executive change for Eddie, Eddie Tuberfield was completed success, successfully. 
uh, the address change for caring that we had just performed was also completed successfully. So this is a good tool that you can take a look at to see any of that information. Now, there was a couple of other different things that I do wanna show you with the compare and synchronize page. Um, and that is how we can resolve a couple of different issues that you might run into. So I want, so we're gonna go navigate back to that member updates archive really quickly. So again, in the four clubs tab, we go ahead and click on RI member synchronization. And from here, we have the very same members in sync section that we were just taking a look at. But if we scroll down just a little bit further, you can see a number of other different sections that are here as well. So we have member name and mismatches right up at the top, member type mismatches, uh, members missing in RI, and members missing in Clubber. So these are all different sections of the compare and synchronize, um, synchronize page for your membership that'll give you an outline of exactly um, which members might not be synchronizing correctly. So if we scroll back up just a little bit, we can see member name mismatches here. We have member Donald Cheadles within Calicid and Club Runner, but their name on Rotary's end is Don Cheadles. Uh, so there's a little bit of a mismatch here. This isn't too big of an issue, but it is something that you, it is worth taking a look at and making sure um, that you can get updated. So let's go ahead and we can fix this issue for, um, for Don here. We'll go ahead and click on the compare action. And we will open up the compare and synchronize tool for Don. And we'll take a look at all of that information that's uh, synchronizing between the two. So in this case, everything looks to be synchronizing correctly with the exception of their first name. So in this case, since it is only a member name mismatch, all we have to do is make sure that we can synchronize the two um, the fields that aren't matching up. So um, we can pick which one we want to synchronize. So we can either say that Donald is the correct name and, or Don is the correct name. And in the very same fashion that we did before, click on the arrow to select the direction that you want the information to flow. So let's go ahead and we can pull the, uh, pull the name Don from Rotary over into Club Runner. So we can make sure that that arrow is pointing to the left. And then when we scroll down, just click on synchronize selected fields, click OK. Uh, are you sure you want to synchronize the like data? Yes, so click OK. And now that's the, this change is now being processed for this member. Um, so we can give it a second. And as it refreshes, you can see now that the name Don has been pulled over into Club Runner and everything is matching now. So if we were to go back to that compare and synchronize page um, and we scroll back down to see a little bit more, you'll see that that member name mismatches feature section is no longer showing up. And Don is now listed under members in sync. So that means that everything is good to go for Don. Um, and there isn't, there's no more issues for their information and they're synchronizing correctly. But now let's go back down to the other fields that we did see here. We have, uh, first we have the member type mismatches where we have two members that are listed here, um, that, that are listed here. We have Donald Sutherland and Sean Wallaby. Um, if we take a look at some of the information that is given to us here, we can see that Donald here, um, Don, or Donald Sutherland is listed as an X member or a terminated member in Club Runner, but they are listed as an active member on Rotary's end. So in this case, Don is an active member of the club, but it looks like for some reason, their profile had been, um, their Club Runner profile had been made inactive and their record had been terminated. So what we can do is we can simply go through and we can update their profile to an active member once again. So we can go ahead and click on the edit profile action. And then from here, we can go under the rotary tab of their profile. 
And then we can move over to the membership type where we can see X member is listed. And then we can go ahead and click on change status, activate membership. And then we can go ahead and we can select, uh, add in some information about the date that they joined the club. Uh, in this case, we can leave it, uh, we, we can leave it to this date. Um, we, we'll leave it to today's date for now, just, uh, just for the sake of, um, of this example. And then we can also select the date that they joined Rotary. And then we can select whether we want to report this, uh, this activation to Rotary. So um, in this case, since Donald Sutherland here is already listed as an active member of the club within Rotary's systems, we're gonna want to not report this activation to Rotary International. If we were to report Donald Sutherland as a new member right now, um, the, you'll, you'll start to receive error messages saying that Donald is already an active member of the club and that the synchronization was unsuccessful. But in this case, we don't really need to synchronize their information. We are just updating the information in Clubberdown to make sure it matches what's in Rotary Zend. So we can set it to do not report this activation to Rotary International and then click Activate Membership. And you can see now the membership type is now listed as active for Donald Sutherland. And now if we go back to the Compare and Synchronize page, um, let me just, I have to navigate just a little bit. Um, so we're gonna go to four clubs and then RI member synchronization. And we scroll back down here you can see that, um, that the member that we have just updated is now no longer listed um, under member type mismatches. Now, we do still we do have Sean Wallaby here still. Um, and in this case, they are an active member within Clubrunner, but they have been terminated on Rotary Zen. So this would be the same thing. Uh, this would be the, uh, pretty much the, a very similar process that we just followed. Um, so Sean is a terminated member of our club, but this change was first performed on Rotary's uh, road through my Rotary prior to the change being made in Club Runner. So that's why they're listed as terminated on Rotary's end, but still active in Club Runner. So all you need to do is go to their profile. Um, so we're gonna, so yeah, sorry, we're going to go to their profile and we're going to change the status of their membership as well. So we go to the Rotary tab. Click on change status for their membership type, terminate membership, and then it'll be very similar. We can go ahead and enter in the date that they have been terminated, select a reason for their termination. And then just like we did for the other member, we're going to not report this termination to River International for pretty much the same reason. So we're gonna go ahead and terminate their membership. And once it, and it'll see, once it brings us back to the, um, it'll, it'll bring us back to the active members list page. And you can now see that they are no longer listed um, as an active member of the club. So let's go ahead and we can go back to the compare and synchronize page. And you can see that, that um, the member type mismatch section is now no longer appearing. So as we go through, um, these sections will only appear if there is an issue that uh, would be listed under them. So since we've resolved the issues for the member name mismatch, as well as the member type mismatch, uh, those sections are just no longer appearing anymore. So if you don't see those, uh, if you don't see these sections showing up, that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, if you do, it's just a nice little notice to say, hey, there might be something wrong with this individual. You should probably take a look and review their information. And now we have a, another couple. Um, uh, we have a number, another couple of sections here. We have members missing in RI and members missing in Clubrunner. Now, if you're taking a look at this, you might notice that Don Lafayette here is listed within both members missing in RI, as well as the members missing in Clubrunner section. Now that can be a little bit confusing 
Uh, how can how can this member be missing in rotary systems as well as club runners? But it's showing up here, so clearly their information is somewhere. So in this case, um, usually when you see this uh, this issue where they're listed in the both of these two sections, this is because their profile is not synchronizing with Rotary, and the connection between their two profiles hasn't been made quite yet. Um, so we haven't really covered exactly what connects these two records um, between Cleverner and Rotary. And this is what this is how we're going to learn. If you take a look down here under the members missing in Cleverner section, you'll see Don Lafayette is listed with an ID. Um, so they have an ID of 11250341. But if you look at members missing in RI, um, you see Don Lafayette, but they don't have that ID here. This ID is the Rotary International uh, Member ID. Uh, so whenever you become a Rotarian, an ID is assigned to you and is used to identify you as a Rotarian. That is what Clubrunner uses to make the connection between your profile in Clubrunner and your profile on Rotary Zen. So in Don's case here, they, they are listed as an active member of the club within, um, within Rotary's end, and they also have a record listed within Club Runner. However, the Rotary ID, um, the Rotary ID that's down here, is not listed within their Club Runner member profile. And because of that, the Club Runner system doesn't have a way to connect their, in their profiles. So we're, what we can do to fix this is all we have to do is update Don's profile to include their Rotary ID. So let's go ahead and we'll copy the Rotary ID down here at the bottom. And then we can go back to Don's profile just by clicking on their name uh, within the members missing in RI section. And this will bring us to their profile. From here, we can go ahead and click on rot the Rotary tab click on the edit button. And then under the rotary member number field, we're going to paste that ID that we just copied into that field. So we've entered in that profile, we can go ahead and click on save. And now we can navigate back to the compare and synchronize page. Uh, I need to go a little, a little bit of a roundabout method. Uh, just due to the, the state, uh, just to, due to the testing environment. But once we get back there, you can see that that members missing in club runner section um, is no longer listed. And Don Lafayette is no longer miss listed as missing in RI. So there are still two members that we show that we show listed here. Uh, we have Christine Jabber and Barrett Wallace here. So Barrett Wallace, um, we can see that they don't have an ID ID listed here, but that's because they are a they're a new Rotarian. Um, so Barrett here was added into Clubrunner as a new member, but for whatever reason, their information wasn't sent over to Rotary, uh, and they weren't added as a new Rotarian on in, in Rotary systems as well. So in cases like that, all we need to do is come to the compare and, synchronize, uh, compare and synchronize page, scroll down to this members missing in RI section, and then we can go ahead and click on the add member to RI action. So we'll go ahead and click on that for Barrett here, and we'll go ahead and click okay. And this will send all of the information that's currently in Barrett's profile over to Rotary International and have them created or have them added as a new Rotary. You can see we get a nice uh, a nice confirmation message up at the top uh, that says the request to add Barrett Wallace to RI has been ske successfully scheduled. So again, it might take a little bit for that information to be fully processed on Rotary's end, but once that's been completed, um, a new Rotary ID number will be generated for Barrett here and it will be automatically added back into their member profile. So if we scroll down just a little bit back to the members missing in RI section, uh, you'll see Barrett is still listed here, 
but that's because their information is still being processed by Rotary. Now, there is one final issue that I do want to go over here, and that's Christine Jabber here. You can see that they are, they have, they are a member missing an RI, and they do have a Rotary ID number. But if we scroll back up to the top of the members missing in sync section, and we go into, we, we take a look at the members listed here, you can see Christine Jabber is listed as a member of the club. And they, they, they do look to be synchronizing correctly. Um, so you see them here, you can go ahead and click on the compare action to take a look at that information. So, but they look to be okay. So how come they're showing up in both sections? Uh, well, that's usually because there is a duplicate record for that member within Clubrunner. So let's, let's go ahead and navigate to our active members list page. So again, in the top blue navigation bar, we're going to go ahead and click on four clubs. Then we can go ahead and click on membership lists. And then if we take a look at our active members list page here, we should be able to find two records for Christine. And if we scroll down uh, really quickly, we can see here we have Christine Jabber, uh, which is the primary address. And then we also have Duplicate Jabber. Uh, this is a, this is, uh, I just changed the name of it really quickly to more easily to, to help find it a little bit easier. So you, it might be a little bit harder for you. You might say, say the exact same thing. So you might see two Christine Jabbers here, for example. Um, but in cases like this, where you do have these multiple records, um, it's really, really easy to fix these. Well, so let's go ahead and we can go into the profile for this duplicate record. So we can just go ahead and click on, the, um, on, their, member, on their name to open up their profile. And here we can see we have the first name Christine, last name Jabber, and then in this case we have the nickname Duplicate, just so that we can help uh, we can help locate it a little bit easier. Um, you, so you're not gonna you're not gonna have this duplicate tag here uh, unless someone else had manually gone and done this. Um, but you can see that this is the generally the same individual in this case. So what I usually recommend doing to deal with these duplicate profiles is to go into their rotary uh, the Rotary tab of their member profile, edit their profile, and then remove the Rotary member ID. Um, what this will do is it'll make it'll break the connection um, for this record between Cleverer and Rotary, just to make sure that there's no issues, um, say whether this, say this profile gets updated accidentally, uh, and, and information is updated incorrectly on Rotary's end, I like to remove the member number just as a backup um, to make sure that nothing can go wrong. You don't necessarily have to do this part, uh, but I, I usually do recommend re uh, removing this regardless. So we've removed that, uh, that ID number. We'll go ahead and click Save. And then what we can do is we're going to terminate this duplicate record. So under Membership Type, we're going to go ahead and click on change status. Then we can click terminate membership. And then we can set and um, we can set the date that they have been terminated. Um, this doesn't really matter too much in this case. But from now, we're going to select a reason for our termination. The one that you're going to want to select, uh, this is fairly important, is the you're going to want to select the duplicate record on Clubrunner termination reason. The reason why you're going to want to select this one is that it will automatically make it so that the this termination is not sent over to Rotary. Um, if we were to report this termination of this duplicate record, there's a chance that the actual record of that member will be terminated from the club as well. So by making it so that this it isn't reported to Rotary, uh, that just makes it uh, makes it so that there there won't be any connectivity between the two systems. And that'll just make it so that there wouldn't be any possible uh, issues that might occur where the where when you're terminating the duplicate record, the member gets terminated from the club overall in, if, instead of just terminating that duplicate record. So we can select duplicate record on Clubrunner as for termination reason. 
Select do not report this termination to our international, which will be selected for you automatically. And then simply go ahead and click terminate member. And now that duplicate record that we just saw will no longer be listed. So we see Christine Jabber here, um, but we no longer see the duplicate Jabber record. So um, that's pretty much just about what I wanted to uh, share with everyone today. Uh, so I am gonna go ahead and I'm going to pass over the webinar to my co-host Zach here, who will be taking you through a, uh, a quick Q&A session. Uh, he'll be answering some of the more popular questions that you guys might have asked, uh, as well as some common questions um, that, we, that, that, may, that usually comes up during these webinars. So I'm going to go ahead and take my leave for a few moments uh, while Zach goes ahead and does his Q&A. Thank you so much, Michael, for handing it back over to me. And thank you guys, everybody, for your patience. I know you've had a ton of great questions uh, that have been popping up, both in the training or both in the chat and the Q and A. Uh, so I'm going to take it right to the top. I've tried to answer most of the 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 some of the more detailed questions, and I know a couple people will need some support after the webinar, and our team will reach out then to to address any of those. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started right at the top. Uh, so Michael G asked. Uh, is this integrating with anything more than the club member integration? And for confirmation, yes. Uh, I think we really got, uh, Michael did a really great job of showing all of that while he was going through, um, but we do have this great file uh, in Club Runner. Uh, it, 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 it basically talks about all the different data points we update. And yes, we manage the majority of the membership members information. Uh, we update the members contact information as well. Uh, club information, in addition to membership information. So your mailing address, your meeting place address, day and time, uh, your website, your club phone numbers, faxes and emails, and major changes in officer uh, data. So, you know, when you terminate your members, you activate the members or you change their membership type. So uh, changing them from active to honorary or honorary to active. Uh, and, and in addition to all of the club officers, all of that data is integrated actively with Rotary. Just remember though, that wherever you're making those changes, if you make them in Club Runner, a lot of those changes will be automatically synced up to Rotary on your behalf. Uh, and if you make those changes at Rotary International, you will need to return back to Club Runner to either manually, uh, to either sync those changes using the tools that are at your disposal or to manually resync those changes, uh, you know, manually uh, adding a member, terminating a member, et cetera. Um, but if you guys ever have any questions or, or trouble with that, our team is always here to help you. So uh, Patricia O asks, how do you make sure that your club is already in sync with Rotary? And again, I think Michael did a really great job with this, but just to keep, uh, I've got a little thing in my way here. Uh, where did it go? Here we go. So this is the RI integration settings page. Uh, and we were here earlier in it. Uh, you can see I didn't have it checked there because I had already had the page loaded up. But coming to this RI integration settings page uh, by using the four clubs and then RI integration uh, will get you to this page. And you can see uh, not only the status of the integration, you can see when the last time it was updated and you can see all of your privacy fields. Now I know Michael uh, commented on this, but I definitely recommend if you haven't looked at your privacy fields recently, uh, you know, check over them, make sure that they are what you really want. Uh, for example, we know a lot of clubs in the past have opted out of birthdays. Uh, and you know, if, if for some reason that is still the case today, you might want to uh, do a little checkup with your club and say, hey, uh, you know, the next time you guys have a meeting, does anyone have a problem with Rotary having any of these fields for our data? If no, you can always turn it off. But uh, the example that I use, if 99% of the club, like if nine out of 10 members are fine and one member is not, go into that individual member, update their personal preferences, and then opt it in for the club. Uh, and the reason I kind of just really hammer that home is if the club makes a decision, that is the final decision. So if you do not allow a birthday, the only way for that member to update their birthday would be to go directly to Rotary International. But if you allow birthdays and members aren't comfortable, they can go to their profile and they can opt out of that. 
Linda asked, how do you access the updates archive? Um, so once again, uh, from the district context, we're almost always going to be using this four clubs menu option here for navigation. And you can see that there is the member updates archive and the club updates archive. Uh, additionally, I'm going to switch tabs here to our welcome tash tab. On the welcome dashboard, when you are a club officer, you will have this club management block. And we also have the RI integration options here. So the second you log in and you land on this page, uh, you can jump right into, oh, look, I need to see what the member updates archive, or I need to go run a parent sync to make sure that everybody is good. One of our attendees asked, for officers, can one have co-officers, e.g. co-secretaries identified and both receive notifications? I believe this question came up while we were talking about the RI integration uh, privacy settings, but as a general point, uh, Rotary only recognizes a single officer at any point in time for the duration of the year. Uh, this is always subject to change, but as of today, that is the case. So you can have an officer serve for six months and then another six months, but two people cannot technically be both reported at Rotary and have all of the same privileges at the same time. Uh, just as a quick comment on that, there is an additional position uh, that Rotary tracks called the executive secretary. Uh, this is a good position if your club doesn't already have someone, having them being similar to either the secretary or the president, uh, but that is definitely like a discussion to have with your club and, and how you report those. Um, there's nothing stopping you too much in, in Club Runner from having multiple officers, except that we don't allow executives to be reported twice, and again, the Rotary integration, but you can definitely list multiple officers for your club. It just Rotary will only track that primary person. Moving along, uh, another attendee asked, if the original entry of the new member had the incorrect sending to not send them to Rotary, can I go back and change it? So uh, just using the example we had here a minute ago, where Michael had, uh, you know, clicked on the add new member button, and on the add new member page, we go down and we choose, you know, or sorry, I'm used to it still being on the bottom. We choose this option, do not report to Rotary. So once we've added the member, we can't re-add them through this screen. But if we use the compare and synchronize option for RI member synchronization here, we could come down, find the missing member, and add them to Rotary. Now, I know a handful of members have asked some questions about what if it's over 30 days? So for any case where you have a member who is more than 30 days out and you didn't send their data to Rotary or there was a problem for some reason, um, you will, uh, you can still get them added, but we kind of have to play with the system. So what we would need to do, I'm actually gonna jump into Barrett Wallace here. We would need to go into the member's profile we would need to go to their Rotary tab. We would need to edit this and set the date joined club to a time within the last 30 days. Once that's complete, we would return, I hit the back button on my mouse there to the members and uh, to the compare and synchronize page and use the add member to Rotary. So this would resend the add member request. It would be within the 30 days. And once that request has been completed and it, it's in at Rotary, we can now work with Rotary's data corrections team by emailing data at rotary.org and saying, hey, uh, you know, Barrett Wallace, Rotary ID, Rotarian ID 11252372, originally joined our club on January 1st, not May 30th. Uh, can you please help us backdate his correction? backdate his join date. And I have not ever heard anybody come back to me saying no. Uh, sometimes there can be some complications if it's a member transferring between the clubs, but in most cases, they, they will help get that uh, done. Uh, another uh, attendee asked, Rotary bills clubs twice a year for membership dues, July 1 and Jan 1. Does Club Runner's data interface with that system or it is a separate data entry? So related to club billings, Yes, the data that you see on this compare and synchronize page is the same data that Rotary has for you. At the end of the day, Rotary will bill you based on your information at Rotary International. So while it's a good idea to absolutely come in here and run the compare and synchronize page and check it, you should also just double check Rotary International for billing reasons because Rotary International is the source of truth. So if there's anything out of stock or funky with any of your data 
in Club Runner that could have an impact at your billing come July 1 or January 1st. So do make sure you keep your information up to date and leading up to, you know, at the, towards the end of June and towards the end of December, definitely log directly into my rotary and double check that your data looks good there. I've got time for one more uh, question here, and it's going to be from our last. Uh, oh, actually, I see that uh, uh, Michael marked a different question for me. So Angela asked, I may have missed, but how do I ensure that, uh, how do I, in, how do I, how am I sure I can make changes? Not seeing me, ah, okay. So Angela, it sounds like you might be coming through the district, and it's really good to remember that the club and district versions are very different applications. You as a club administrator, if you're not also a club officer, don't actually have any permissions at the district level. And things like attendance data aren't recorded like individual meetings. Um, so if you have any other questions, uh, I will reach out to you or our team will reach out to you after the webinar. And if you have any other questions for us, we can follow up and keep going there. So I, I, I've got one, I've got time for just one more question. Um, anonymous attendee is asking, what's the difference between the district version of and the club version? Uh, I could absolutely spend an entire hour talking just about that. But the real big difference is that when you use the club version, that is just for your club and for your membership. Other members of the district can't get in there. And there are more tools just for the club that only impact the club. Uh, really great examples of this are attendance recording, um, you know, meeting makeups, duty rosters, billing, and emails. When you're only using your district's website from a club perspective, you can manage your club and your membership. However, you can't really do more than that. You can't send emails out to your membership. You only have basic attendance tracking. So the district version allows the district to offer uh, management for all of their clubs and it handles their communication and tracking needs, whereas the club version is just for the club. All right, uh, that uh, I had a wonderful time uh, here with you guys today, and I know Michael did as well. Uh, I think that is going to wrap it up for us for today. Uh, so Michael, I am going to hand it right back to you. Thank you, Zach. Uh, thank you for that really wonderful Q&A session. I, I hope everyone was able to gather some really good information from all of those various different questions. Uh, of myself, um, I do find that a lot of this, the, these se sessions are really helpful. You guys asked a lot of great questions. Um, and I hope you guys were able to gather a lot of new information that will help you get going um, within Club Runner. Uh, to make sure that all of your membership is good to go and you have a, a solid understanding of what um, and how these systems work within, um, within your district's website. So thank you everyone again for joining. Um, don't forget, if you do, if we did happen to miss your question or you might have any follow-up questions or anything like that, you can always feel free to send uh, the, our Clubrunner support team an email over at support at clubrunner.ca as you see on the screen right now. Uh, you can also go and log into our clubrunnercommunity.com website as well to, to start discussions and ask questions with other individuals who are using the Clubrunner application for their own club or district. And then finally, um, we do also have the Clubrunner mobile app that is available for both iPhone and Android devices, um, which will give you a direct directory to your own club's um, your own club's membership directly on your own personal device. Uh, again, I hope everyone did really enjoy this training session today. Uh, I do recommend you visit clubrunner.com/training. Uh, in order to register for some of the additional um, training sessions that we will be hosting in the next uh, over the course of the next month or so. So again, thank you everyone for joining us today. I, I hope you all have a great evening. Take care, everyone.